E. 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 Hey guys, Pokey Mountain here, bringing you a well soapbox episode. I I've been sick for the last week, so I wasn't doing any videos and that sort of thing, and I've been very inactive in the game. I've been playing and I've done my daily my daily rewards and i've done my daily donations and that sort of thing but i haven't been highly active but that's because i've been sick and i threw out my back and i've been in a lot of pain and on meds and things like that but this week has also afforded me the opportunity to go through the facebook posts for the from the king of avalon facebook page and to go through the discord server and to work on the koa ultimate document and things like that and and I've I've come to a sort of thinking point. The KOA developers are progressively pushing and pushing more and more free-to-play players out of the game. A lot more. The progression of the shop event from event to event and making it more and more difficult for the free-to-play players to actually obtain anything and including the 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 low cost the, the 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 minimal spend players to actually obtain anything has become more and more and more ridiculous and with this new update 10.2.0 it brought with it even more where the KOA developers have turned around and said screw you to the free to play players and I, I just wanted to, to, to share some of that and some of, some of my thinking regarding it as a free-to-play player. Um, what, I, what I think is, is the situation. What do I think is happening to the game? Where do I think it's going and things like that? And uh, yeah, that's, that, that's basically it. So a couple of things. The first thing is the, the merger. Okay, now we've recently had the merger with a certain number of kingdoms. Uh, where they actually merged with other kingdoms and number one it supposedly put less strain on the servers and made it easier uh, less kingdoms meant that you had more activity in each kingdom and you had less dead castles and things like that and the concept is is, is all good and well and it's fantastic and uh, uh, it's a good direction but i think that the koa developers went about it completely wrong and they, 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 they kept changing their mind, they changed the system, and then certain people were excluded, and a lot of the people that were excluded are people who are having the same problems, where they're in an, a kingdom where there are a lot of dead alliances. And the majority reason for why there are dead alliances is because of the KOA development team themselves. And this push to, to, to switch the free-to-play players to spending players and that sort of thing. I understand it is a business and we'll have a look at that now as well, but the way in which they're doing it and the extent to which they are doing it makes it extremely difficult for new players to actually stick in the game and to stick around. And you've probably seen it yourself in, if you're one of the newer kingdoms, you've probably seen yourself where a lot of people have come and gone because the game is just so damn expensive, you know? Um, and it's, it, it causes a lot more problems. And there, there are a lot of things that are easy to actually solve. The first thing is this merger could have easily been solved by simply making it that every odd number uh, kingdom is going to merge with its counterpart even number. So, example, kingdom 1 and 2 would merge. Kingdoms 13 and 14 would merge. Kingdoms 901 and 902 would merge, for example. Now... Obviously, there are going to be certain times where it can't work. For example, let's say 901 and 902 had a hell of a lot of active players, but it still would have been okay because they still would have had even more active players, which would have promoted the game, would have promoted alliances, which would have promoted alliances working well together because there's so many good alliances then that people would only stick in an alliance if the alliance itself is worthwhile, if the players within the alliance make it worthwhile by helping each other out, by supporting each other, by the exchange of goods, by assisting with resources and things like that. And they would have cut down their number of kingdoms literally in half. They would have had everybody able to merge into a new 
a new kingdom, a quasi-kingdom sort of thing that is a combination of the two. And it would have done literally half the load that they had currently on their servers. Would have, it would have, been, would have halved that straight down the middle. Every kingdom could have been participated and everybody would have felt connected and included. That is my opinion. That is what I think. And maybe there's more behind it that I don't know and why they couldn't do it that way. Maybe that was a potential option. Who knows? Um, moving beyond that, you've got the issue with everything becoming so much more expensive and pushing out the free-to-play players. And what do I mean by that? Well, effectively, if we go look at the game itself, the latest limited quest, okay, now the historically speaking, the limited quests have always been a case of uh, the free-to-play players would be able to obtain enough in it to maybe get the first reward. But this latest one makes it that the only way to get rewards is to have the best of the up until now latest set of statues which you couldn't obtain at all as a free-to-play player you had to you have to purchase those in order to get enough points if you wanted to get even the first place prize of 120 points you had to have a combination of these uh, higher genesis statues which cost money in the game okay the highest you can get is going to be 480 points or something like that by even if you had purchased or every single one of your 16 statues as legendary genesis you would still only have like 480 uh, uh, points which means you would be in the middle of these two over here and you wouldn't get anywhere near the main points without right now spending a ton of money to get the rewards and I'm talking about a ton of money. If you go and have a look at the cost now, let's go see those statues quickly. If I'm buying statue fragments, I need 200 of these Arcana in order to get one statue. Okay? The biggest bundle gives you 70, and that is a $100 bundle. Okay? So you're going to need over $300 to get this once. That's to get enough of those to make one set of statues. So you'll be able to put in four basic statues, and let's have a look here. We go to our points. We're going to go down to basic uh, oracle, and it's 39 points each. So you can say 40 points. That will give you 4, 8, 12, 16, 160 points, or just under 160 points. Spending real-world money, $300, to get back 10,000 gold coins. Okay. Not worth it. Not, not even slightly worth it. Now, if you've got somebody who's going to spend a ton of money, they're going to spend a ton of money, get the stats, and they're going to get high rewards. But to get to this 10,000 points, you're going to have to make sure that you are going all out with the legendaries everywhere. Legendary oracle everywhere. You know how much physical, world, real world money that is going to cost? And you've got to do it within four days, according to them. Within four days, they expect you to drop that kind of money in order to get that kind of reward. And that is just ridiculous. Fine, there's probably going to be players out there that do it. But now, what about the people that can't? The people who are free-to-play players, okay? Normally, as I say, this event, you have at least your first reward that your free-to-play players can have. And for the last two, we couldn't either. I am currently sitting with every single statue in my castle is apocalyptic, okay? Every single one of my statues, all the way down, every single one is apocalyptic. Now, apocalyptic is the highest level you can get as a free-to-play player. You can get a few Genesis fragments, but there are very few and far between with, uh, as I call, add-ons for rewards and different things. But basically speaking, apocalyptic is where you're going to go. Even, even if you look at the current Honors Pass rewards, now, I mean, this is to celebrate the new statues, which is the R8 level statues. The great reward is an R8. If you come down to the advanced reward, you get an R6, the apocalyptic. You don't even get the R7. So even if you get these rewards here, they're basically saying to you, uh, no, spend more money. If, you, if you're going to get your free key and you're going to get lucky enough to get one of those items, spend more money for it to actually be, be worthwhile. If you want to do anything in terms of your lucky draw, these lucky draws here, for example, as a free-to-play player, 
the maximum you're going to get is you're going to get two rewards a day, okay, by maximizing out on all your daily tasks. And the event itself is lasting for, for five days, which means you get to draw once. And the way this works is it always gives you, out of the items you chose, it always gives you the item with the lowest value first. And it goes up in value order according to them. So if you, when you are doing your picking and it says to you pick four, then pick three, then pick two, they actually go in that order. Your four go come first, then your three, then your two. So your four cheaper items, you'll be lucky to get one of those if you actually do every single day all your real, all your daily tasks. For all five days, you get to do this once. If you spend any money, you can actually get a bundles. So if you for every one thousand gold earned by purchasing bundles, you get five items for the lucky draw. Okay, cool. So your one dollar bundles don't help you. They give you 200 gold. You need a thousand gold. You're going to have to purchase your bigger bundles. So they're saying to you once again, if you don't spend money, we're going to give you nothing in return. That's simple. Now, people have been moaning about this free to play versus pay to win thing in King of Babylon forever. Guns of Glory as well, forever. The reality is that at the end of the day, this is a business. Okay, let me get to here so I can show you. Okay, here's an article that was written in 2019. Um, it's about the actual the revenue, the income that has been obtained through King of Babylon. Now, as I say, this was 2019, so obviously they've earned a lot more since then, especially with 2020 being an entire year of lockdown worldwide. They would have had a lot more people during the game, a lot more players, which means a lot more in-game revenue. Oren Bennett, Game Operations for Fun Plus, said in an interview with GamesBeat that King of Avalon has generated more than $721 million in revenue since 2016, and Guns of Glory has generated more than $510 million since launching in 2000. Right. So that is the purpose of this game for them. It is to make money. That's the reality of it. Like it or not, that is how the game is meant to be done. The game is not meant to be played forever as a free-to-play player. You're going to get to the point where, like now, I'm sitting on Stronghold Level 30, and it's extremely difficult and extremely grindy, even with eight farms, for me to be prepared for going up even higher. Now, at the moment, I've got enough noble badges and stuff, for example, that I know that during the next shop event, I've got enough noble badges here that I'm going to be able to do the half uh, price sort of thing, get myself this one here, and get myself one or two of my other, my, my training upgrades, you know, my bowman and my infantry, for example. Now, it's taken me two shop events to save up all of that as a free-to-play player. With the changes that they're constantly making and the fact that they're making it more and more difficult every single time, it gets to the point where, like now, I'm at Stronghold Level 30 and the game becomes nothing but a literal grind holding on for the next event. Okay, so I'm, I sit in the game and I log in every day and I come through here and I do my daily tasks and I go have a look. All right, what are we doing at the moment? What is worthwhile me actually joining in? What rewards can I get as a free-to-play player? Well, let's have a look at the Alliance Hunt, okay? The Alliance Hunt basically gives me resources. Every time I open up one of the bags that comes from the Stone Sentinel, I'm going to be getting myself certain amounts of resources. Great. If I come through to the Alliance Hunt, I'm also going to be getting rewards. Okay, cool. Let's have a look here. What are we getting? Okay, nine noble badges and some material. Cool. Okay, I'll take it. It's something. Um, Netherfall. Let's go have a look at Netherfall itself. If you're not participating in Netherfall, you, your rewards are a couple of coins you get from gambling. But let's go and have a look in the shop itself. So I can get Catagone Fragments. Fantastic. And I can get Philosopher's Stones and Crystals and that sort of thing. And they actually, some of them end up being extremely expensive. For one level 5 intensity crystals, it's 60 gold coins. That's extremely expensive, considering I can get the Catagone Fragment for 55 gold, co 55 gold coins. 
and I can scroll down and I can see all the different things available. And as a free-to-play player, sure, I've managed to get myself mm -hmm. Cadigan from this event. And I participated in Battle 3 onwards. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. I participated in 9 of these uh, Netherfall events. Um, so I managed to get myself 36 Cadigan fragments just drop. Okay, so that's great. But what else? What else can I get for free in this game? Okay, let's go look at the other events. Uh, the statue trials. Okay, so what are my rewards? My rewards is more statue material. Okay, cool. Now, what if I've already got the apocalypse like I've got now? That statue material is going to help me nothing. Nothing at all. So that means as a free-to-play player, this event gives me nothing as well. All right, Excalibur Invasion. Right, let's have a look. So this is where you're going to go and you're going to raid other kingdoms. Okay, let's go look at the rewards. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we have a look. Um, we... Uh, sorry, not raid other kingdoms. This is for KBK. Right, so we got some rewards here. Some decent sized rewards. But in order to get these rewards at the top here, you're going to have to be doing a lot of kills and a lot of damage. Uh, can you do that as a free-to-play player who is relatively new to the game? No. You're going to have low stats. You might have 3k stats, for example. You might have uh, uh, half a million troops. You're not going to be able to do well enough in that event to potentially actually max out on those rewards. So, once again, if, as a free-to-play player, what does that give you? Not very much. Royal Arena. Royal Arena was just changed, and the rewards that you actually get now is more meteorite iron. So you can get more material. You can still get your war scrolls, but you get more equipment material. Do we really need the meteorite iron? Maybe, maybe not. Um, is it worthwhile? Maybe, maybe not. I, I personally don't think so, uh, but that depends on your, your personal situation. Okay, so let's look at the portal monster. Everybody gets to do the portal monster. All right, so what are the rewards we get for the portal monster? You get yourself a little bit of RSS and maybe a couple of water drake emblems, which by now is so old that either you've got them already or spending every two days doing this and getting yourself, for example, four water drake manuscripts is not going to get you anything. It's going to take forever to get there. So we go look at the Alliance store. Okay, so let's go see what we've got here. The Alliance store, for some reason, the KOA development team still think it's a good idea to have the different kingdoms have different items in their stores. Right now, with update 10.2.0, some of the kingdoms have got the Raven Ascendant Scrolls. Uh, we don't. We don't. So now what happens is that kingdom has the ability to get better hero weapons than we do. And what if we end up going against that kingdom during KVK? During Netherfall? during uh, uh, Firelands, for example. You can't guarantee me that they can isolate the kingdoms that have got these rewards and the kingdoms that have got these rewards and say, right, you will only verse people within there, you will only verse people within there. Of course not. So the Alliance store gives you unbalanced things according to which kingdom you're in. Again, that doesn't help. And as a free-to-play player, let's just see here quickly. So for example, you can get yourself... Still the old gems, the two old gems now. You can still get your destruction ingots. You can get seven a day. And you can get seven a day. You can get the Scarlet Drake uh, uh, manuscripts. Okay, 14 a day. And it's going to take you an extremely long time to actually build this up. So what does that mean? That means that you are going to have to spend every single day coming into the game and just grinding. Now, that was okay. There was no problem with that. I could actually understand that. And especially as somebody who's been playing now for over three months now, that's typical. You grind. That's how all these sorts of games work. You grind. If you have farms, you grind your farms too so that you can get your resources and you can upgrade. The problem comes into it with the fact that the main things that the game itself offers outside of being farmable is something that the free-to-play players either are being excluded from now, like with this timed, uh, timed event, this, what's the Time Lord Target, I think they call it? The Time Lord Target. So the, the free-to-play players and the low-end spenders are being completely excluded out of certain uh, uh, ones of these events in terms of getting anything out of it, or 
the development teams making it so expensive to try and force them into spending money in the game. That's effectively the nutshell. What does that mean for us? Well, that means one of three things. Either A, you're going to have to suck it up and be a free-to-play player and try and keep going and grind and grind and grind and grind. Option two, start spending money in the game. Whether it be a medium spend amount or a high spend amount, that's up to you. Or option three, stop playing the game. Unfortunately, those are the only three options that there are. And a lot of people are constantly complaining on the Facebook groups, on the Discord servers, on YouTube videos and things that the, the development team no longer thinks about the, the free-to-play players or the low-spend players. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to tell you this, but this is a business. As much as to us it's a game, to them it is a business. And they have to make money. That is the point of the business. Do I think they're taking it too far? Personally, yes, I do. I think they, because they're making the shop and everything more difficult, because they're excluding certain players from events like this Time Lord Targets, they are making it that they are losing more players who are new to the game, who might become spenders, or losing players who are free-to-play players, who are effectively still just as important as spending players in terms of Without them, you wouldn't be able to flesh out your kingdoms and you wouldn't be able to have as many people in your kingdoms. If you took only the high-end players, you could probably boil them down to less than 10 kingdoms. You lump them all together in 10 kingdoms and that would be all that there is to the game. The other 90% uh, of the kingdoms are the free-to-play and low- and mid-end spenders, which are being neglected at the moment. And I think that the KOA development team needs to actually have a look at that. But us as the players need to stop and be aware of the fact that this is a business and that they are trying to make money. And we've got to make that choice. Either we stop complaining about it and we remain free to play players, we spend money in the game, or we stop playing the game. Now, I myself am in that position at the moment where I'm trying to make that decision. Uh, as I say, I've been off for a week sick and I've managed to go through a lot of the stuff and read a lot of articles and I've spoken to some of the mods and everything. And... The direction of the game for a, as a free-to-play player is somewhat doomed, in my opinion. My opinion. Um, it's going to become more and more difficult, and it's going to become worse and worse for free-to-play players to actually succeed in the game. I am in the situation where I actually can't become a paying player. Physically cannot become a paying player. So I'm forced to either be a free-to-play player or... Stop playing the game. That's my decision to make, and that's a decision you need to make as well. Guys, that was it. It was just a bit of a soapbox thing. Just wanted to get some thoughts off my chest and give my opinion on all of this. As I say, there's a lot of people moaning about it all over the place, and there's a lot of disjointed thoughts and things like that. So I just wanted to give my opinion that you guys hear from me. I'm very curious as to what your opinion is. This... This, more than any other video I've made to date, I, I want the comments. I would like you to comment down below. Tell me what you think. If you look down in the description, you'll see a link to my Discord server. If you want to talk to me about it or give me your opinions, please join the Discord server. Talk to me. Send me messages. I will reply. We can have a discussion about this. I'm extremely curious to see the majority of people who watch this video, for example. How many of you are free-to-play players? How many of you are low-end or mid-range or high-end spenders and that sort of thing. How much do you spend on the game? Do you think it's worthwhile? Are you going to keep spending that money in the game? If you are a free-to-play player, do you see a future for yourself in this game still going forward at the current uh, uh, slanted progression that they're using to sort of push more and more people into spending? What are your thoughts? Join the Discord server. Drop a comment down below, please. I'm very curious to find out what you are thinking. Um, let's, let's have a chat. Right. Um, no intros, no outros, or anything like that. I am just wanted to share with you guys. So until the next video, be good, be well. Bye.